I'd like to turn your attention to the management of children with limb deficiencies. This will be a series of talks, each relating to uh, the one previous uh, to it, and the first one is titled Principles. The most important thing when managing children of for any reason, is to recognize that they're not small adults. It's not just a matter of miniaturizing things. Children with limb deficiencies uh, are more likely to be congenital in origin. They're more likely to involve the upper extremities and also to involve multiple limbs. This photograph on the right of the little boy shows this in extreme. And a good one to keep in mind because this uh, encapsulates all of the issues of congenital problems. That is, that they are involving both upper extremities more commonly and also that they involve multiple limbs. When you contrast the two, con children with congenital lesions are uh, three times more likely to have multiple limb involvement as compared to those who have acquired deficiencies such as from trauma or infection or tumor. Children, in addition, seldom have associated diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and stroke, which are diseases that truly complicate managing adults with limb deficiencies. In the positive, the uh, child is more likely to be agile and is easier to train to use new devices. On the other hand, they're unlikely to be careful in their use and maintenance of their prostheses, and they surely don't appreciate the tremendous costs involved. There are more special needs in prosthetic components, and therefore the costs are higher. Issues unique to managing children with limb deficiencies are primarily three. Those related to growth and length, those related to changes in developmental capabilities, and those related to terminal overgrowth. This latter is a large enough subject matter to be discussed in a separate talk. Let's first talk about growth and length. The problems differ with whether the child's uh, problem is acquired or congenital. Let's first discuss those related to acquired deficiencies. As I'm sure you know, all bones grow through the physes at the both ends of the bones. And in the femur, which we have depicted here, uh, it's not the same in both ends. That is, the growth in the proximal end it takes is about 25%, and the distal end about 75%. Well, what difference does that make? Well, if you take a child at one year whose femur is approximately 14 centimeters, and that child, when they're fully grown, is going to that femur is going to be 46 centimeters, approximately 32 centimeters in growth. However, three quarters, i.e. 32 centimeters, is going to happen distally. Now imagine what would happen if that child had to undergo an amputation just proximal to the physis of the distal femur. Well, the vast majority of the growth of the femur is lost and uh, that will result ultimately in very difficult prosthetic management. So the clue is do everything possible to save the physes. What can be done? Well, if skin coverage is needed, you could think in terms of taking a section out of the mid-shaft and shortening the bone sufficiently to get coverage and then getting the residual growth uh, as time goes on. So a centimeter, so uh, a mid shortening of let's say five centimeters is going to still save that 32 centimeters that are going to occur distally. Another option is to leave the stump open and children fare better in that regard. And one can even use split thickness graft in children, which is not something that you can expect to work in an adult. Growth and length in congenital deficiencies, however, is a different issue. 
With congenital deficiencies, you see a child when they're very young and the parents want to know what's going to be done. When does something need to be done? Well, how can you predict what's going to be happening? Well, it's quite easy. And that is due to the principle of proportionality. That is, the growth of a congenitally short limb will progress at the same proportional rate as the difference between the limbs at the time of birth. For example, in this drawing, what you see is what you get. This young child on the left has a short uh, left leg, and the adult will be in the same proportion as they were as an infant. So when you see that infant at age few months old, you can make a prediction to the parents as to what the need will be at maturity. And this then helps you establish a plan for managing that child. The second issue that is unique to children is that of the developmental capabilities. You know that a child of two can't do as much as a child of five, nor a child of ten. And that the prosthetic components for children need to be appropriate to developmental age. You can't give an adult-sized implement to an infant and expect them to be able to manage it. And it's no different with a tool such as a lawnmower than it would be with a terminal device on the end of a prosthetic arm. But the important thing to keep in mind is that these developmental capacities are always changing. And so having once made a decision about a child's capabilities, that has to be constantly re-evaluated. And that while there are tables and uh, known uh, expectations for children at different ages, keep in mind that Children uh, with limb deficiencies, that some of them may have uh, psychomotor delay in their development, and that these, uh, their capabilities will not be the same as the standard child's. When does one think in terms of fitting an upper extremity prosthesis to a child who is born without an upper limb? With the old adage, fit with sit, that is, when the child is able to sit, is still a very good one. And that uh, uh, allows them to then uh, be strong enough to, to uh, be able to grasp objects or to, to uh, play with uh, things using the two extremities. And so fit with sit is a good thing to keep in mind. Well, having fitted the upper extremity, then at what age do you start to activate the terminal device? Obviously, the six-month-old child has no understanding of how to use the terminal device, although one a parent can open the thumb up and put a, a, a cookie, for example, and a child learns that this is an object that, or a device that will hold objects. But usually the activating of the terminal device is at an older age in the neighborhood of two and a half to three. But again, this will de depend on the child's uh, developmental uh, capabilities. What about the lower extremity? When do we fit there? Well, ordinarily a child begins standing at about 11 to 12 months and that you want to have the child fitted so that they will have the use of the prosthesis when uh, their brain is ready to um, work with it. Now, since you recognize that it may take the uh, uh, prosthetist uh, a number of weeks to actually fabricate the device, we usually like to start so that the, uh, the prosthesis can be delivered at about the age of 11 months. What about articulating the knee? Well, ordinarily, this, this is usually uh, delayed until the child is uh, three or four. Uh, at that age, or prior to that age, children often sit down with their knees sticking straight out in front of them. There has been more recent interest in uh, uh, using an articulated knee in children younger than that. However, it's still at a discussion uh, point. 
Now lastly, in terms of children with limb deficiencies, never forget that if there's one anomaly, look for other anomalies. So if there's a limb anomaly, keep in mind that there may be kidney anomalies or heart anomalies. Uh, and so uh, that can't be overlooked. In recapping, then, a child is not a small adult. Children with limb deficiencies are more commonly congenital, more commonly involve their upper extremities, and more commonly involve multiple limbs. And that the issues unique to children's limb deficiencies focus around l growth in length, and that's different for acquired diseases, in which case save the physis, and for congenital, one can plan ahead using the principle of proportionality. And keep in mind that when there's one anomaly, look for others. The next talk, we will focus on the terminal stump overgrowth, which is a very important issue in managing children with limb deficiencies. Thank you for watching. And if you have any comments, please send them to me at hwatts at ucla.edu. And for additional YouTube help videos, contact at this address. Thank you.